Yes, sir. Bennett? Yes, sir. Thurston? Here, sir. Kane? Cadet Kane? Sir, Cadet Kane has been missing from the barracks since Reveille. The Commandant has been notified. Very well, carry on. Right? Hey! What? Ha! Ha! Up! Come in, Barnett. You know my associate, Mr. Horstman. Last time we met, all he was picked up for trying to sell life insurance to unwilling shopkeepers. I gave that up. I sell death insurance now. That's a joke. To what do I owe the honor, Willie? I just want to talk to you, Barnett. Nothing personal. Tell your muscle to put away his pea shooter. I need your help, Barnett. I don't work for hoods, Willie. Not even when they operate million dollar policy rackets. Okay, okay, I know how you feel. But you're gonna listen to what I have to say anyway. I, uh, I have a son, William Kane Jr., same name as me. That was a dirty trick to play on him, Willie. Look, Barnett, I've done a lot of things I ain't very proud of in my life. When you live in the jungle all your life, you get to behave like an animal sometimes. But one thing I can hold my head up and say, Willie Kane brought up his kid to be a good citizen, not a killer like his own man. <laughs> That's hard to swallow. It happens to be true. Right, Augie? That's right, Willie. I know the kid since he was in diapers. The kid gets an idea he wants to enlist, see? He wants to be a soldier boy. He wants to start at a small salary. You know, like a peasant. I'm proud of the kid he feels that way. But I want him to have an education. So he goes along only no help from me, see? And he takes these here competitive exams. And he gets in, all by himself. Gets in where? Tri-State Military Academy. Almost as tough as West Point. And when he gets out, he's a second lieutenant in the Army Reserve. I'm listening, Willie. My son, Willie Kane Jr., studying to be an officer. And like they say, a gentleman. I brought you his picture. Looks like a major general already, huh? Get to the point, Willie. Okay. This morning, I got a call from the Commandant. My son is missing. Disappeared into thin air. He left a note. Augie, you wrote down what it said. The Commanding Officer Corps Cadet from Cadet William Kane, Jr. Subject, resignation. One, I find I am unable to maintain the standards and discipline of the Academy. I feel my continued presence here will prejudice the interests and honor of the Academy. Two, therefore, I am resigning effective immediately. Signed, William Kane, Jr., Corps of Cadets, Tri-State Military Academy. Looks as if your kid chickened out, Willie. The kid was at the top of his class. You want to know why he disappeared? To protect me, that's why. I thought that was Augie's job. Two days ago, a federal grand jury started an investigation of policy in the East. They sent my son a subpoena. Ah, now I begin to get the picture. Can't you see the headlines? Cadet son of Policy King testifies against his own father. So he took off. What else could he do? It's your own fault, Willie. You wished it on him. That's right, Barnett. That kid is the only thing in this apple that means that to me. And I ain't gonna let him torpedo his whole life just because I made a couple of mistakes. What do you figure to do? You're a smart Seamus, Barnett. You got connections. I want you to help me find the kid. Bring him back. Let him testify against me. You mean that? I said it, didn't I? Yeah, I guess you did, Willie. What do you say, Barnett? I'll pay you any price. I wouldn't touch your filthy money with sterile gloves. But I hate to think that a kid who's trying to make it the hard way has to suffer because of your sins. I'll see what I can do. You'll try to find the kid? I said I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Barnett. You'll never regret it. And if there's anything I could do... There is. Name it. Take your cheap muscle man and get out of here. The next time you want to employ a private detective, come in like a gentleman. Hold it, Augie. Barnett is right. Come on, let's go. I 
I'm a sick man, Barnett. It don't make much difference to me where I finish my time. The important thing is the kid. Anything he wants to tell a grand jury is okay with me. The important thing is the kid, you understand? Okay, Willie, I understand. Three minutes and 30 seconds till assembly. Three minutes and 29 seconds till assembly. Three minutes and 28 seconds till assembly. Three minutes and 27 seconds till assembly. Three minutes. Mr. Whisker, that Kane's room. First right, sir. See some wrinkles in that chin, mister. First year man. Now I know why they call these slave quarters. <laughs> Not a country club, Mr. Barnett. Between the tradition and the training, when a man finishes here, he's just as proud of his reserve commission as any West Pointer. Cadet Roberts? This is Mr. Barnett, a private investigator. He has leave from the Commandant to speak to you. He'll answer all his questions. I'll be in my office, Mr. Barnett. Thanks, Captain. So, you're Bill Kane's roommate. You know where he's gone? No, sir. The tactical officer says he wouldn't have access to his own civilian clothes. That's correct, sir. They're locked in the basement during plea beer. Could any have been sent to him? No, sir. I would have known, sir. Then he must still be in uniform. At ease, huh? Thank you, sir. Now, look, Roberts. There's sentries on all the gates. We've checked the local railroad station. There are no canoes missing from the boathouse. And as far as we can determine, he wasn't picked up by any passing motorists. The chances are he's still on the reservation. Do you ever mention a likely hiding place to you? I can't say, sir. You know why he left? Yes, sir. He didn't want to disgrace the academy. You think that's admirable? Yes, sir. Don't you think a man ought to give testimony? I don't think a man should testify against his own father, sir. Bill would have had to refuse, and his refusal would have been a reflection on the academy. He had no choice but to resign. He must have discussed it with you. Yes, sir. You have no idea where he might be hiding? I can't say, sir. Would you tell me if you did? I'd rather not answer that, sir. Okay, Roberts. Want to look around some more? If that's your privilege, sir. How many light bulbs in Belfont Hall? What is the definition of leather? How many gallons in Cribbins Reservoir? How often does the governor visit the academy and where does he stay? What's this? Plebes are required to memorize the answers, sir. Why do I keep this? I don't think Bill will be needing it, sir. Wait a minute. How many grades did they issue, Roberts? Two sets, sir. Both canes are here. If he got the subpoena last night, he wouldn't have had time to get civilian clothes. What's missing? Coveralls and combat boots, sir. Anything else? I wouldn't know, sir. Thanks, Roberts. Sorry, sister, I didn't mean to frighten you. Oh, that's all right. I was just straightening your room. I found this under your door when I came in. Hey, pretty girl like you ought to be able to help me. Where's some nice secluded spot someplace around the academy nobody would be apt to stumble on? Oh, Mr. Barnett, at your age. Well, just in case. Well, there's always matrimonial mile, but that gets crowded and there's mosquitoes. Then there are the caves under Fort Tunsby, and sometimes you could sneak a canoe and paddle over to Squaw Point, just below Knightstown. Then there's the old mustering hall. That's mostly empty, but the echoes are spooky. You sound as if you'd had an occasional date. Oh, well, my boyfriend's a cook over at the academy. A retired military man himself. He was a mess sergeant when I...
Isn't this hotel off limits to plebes? Why, yes, sir. This is the North Wing? Yes, sir. Governor's suite? Just around the corner. The governor isn't visiting at the moment, is he? Oh, you'd know it if he were. Your pass key? Mm-hmm. I'll do a little sightseeing. Mr. Barnett. I'll return it. You better come along, just to see that I don't steal any towels. Mr. Barnett, you can't do this. No one is allowed in here ever except the governor. The governor doesn't eat too well when he's here, does he? Polishes his own shoes, too. Now, that's real humility. Don't tell me this is his. Now, mister. Explain what you were doing off limits. I went to see Cadet Kane, sir. You knew he was hiding in the General Marcy Hotel? I suspected it, sir. Why did you go? To try to convince him to give himself up, sir. Did you see him? No, sir. Now, tell us what happened. I thought I was being followed the moment I left barracks, sir. I doubled back, then went over to the hotel. I passed Mr. Barnett's room. I guess he saw me. But briefly. I ducked into the suite. Go on, mister. Bill, Cadet Kane wasn't there. I saw a note on the table. Before I could read it, I was slugged. That's all I remember. Did you see the man who slugged you? No, sir. Do you have any idea where Cadet Kane might have gone? None, sir. He left his undressed gray, so he must have changed clothes. You know what clothing he took with him? His fatigue, sir. Probably trying to pass as an enlisted man. There's an army post near here, Camp Hale. What color shoes? Tan, sir. Combat. Do you know what he was doing with a can of black shoe polish? No, sir. He left his black shoes. Very well, mister. Report to your barracks under arrest. Colonel. Mr. Barnett? I'd like to ask one more question. Go ahead. Roberts, did you slip this warning note under my door? No, sir. Okay. Will that be all, sir? For the moment. Sir, I... I'm aware of your motives in trying to help Cadet Kane Roberts, but you're equally aware of the regulations of the Academy. If I may... Dismiss. Kennedy. Sir? We've established that Cadet Kane may still be on the reservation. I want his name called at every formation for the next three days. Yes, sir. Colonel, what happens to Kane if he doesn't answer roll call? This is not West Point, Mr. Barnett. If it were, Cadet Kane's unorthodox resignation might subject him to a charge of desertion. We're a state institution empowered to punish absence without authorized leave with summary dismissal. Officially, that's all. But actually, we'd be sentencing him to live the rest of his life with the knowledge that he'd run away. His first time under fire. I see. And that's why you're gonna give him a chance to answer roll call. We're not as cold-blooded as we sound. We're human beings, Mr. Barnett. Kane's a good cadet, the top of his class. We'll do everything we can to avoid dismissal. But he's got to report in. And soon. General, where's the minstrel show? Summer training maneuvers, sir. Field problem. Sounds like fun. What's the problem? Oh, a lot of real estate over near Lake Economy. First and second battalions own it, and third and fourth battalions try to take title. <laughs> After a couple of weeks, everybody gets poison ivy and goes home. <laughs> you talk like a veteran. Oh, I'm an expert at fighting for it. This is my third time. No one of you better ever try to take Lake Economy from me. Hey, mister, this is C Company. Want to miss your chance to sleep in a swamp? Okay, take off, Corporal. What happened to your makeup, Sergeant? Ran out of black shoe polish. Let's go, Corporal. Sorry, sir, but I don't think civilians are allowed. Uh, that's all right. I'm a magazine writer. Doing a story on the West Point of the West. Yeah, what magazine? Uh, National Geographic. You caught the right bus, mister. C Company specializes in geography. 
Hey, in those shoes there, it's gonna seem like Valley Forge. My editor didn't decide to send me to war until late this afternoon. They're your feet, I'm happy to say. Soldier, full KP. I got the wrong truck. You'll probably have to walk it out in a lot of extra duty tomorrow. <laughs> Tough luck. <laughs> Fellow stay up in the woods a few weeks, huh? Depends on how the problem runs. Sometimes we stay up here all summer. You don't seem to be enjoying the ride, Kane. Sir? Your plebe haircut's showing. doing here? Well, uh, Willie thought you might need some help, so I trailed you out here. You got a line on the kid? I had a line on him, but I lost him. Come on, he can't be far. Kane kid's a first-class dunce. His old man's gonna come clean with a grand jury anyway. Okay, okay, let's get going. This place gives me the creeps. A typical hoodlums kid, no guts. Augie Sr. may be a crummy character, but he never chickened out when the heat was on. Cut the locker room talk, will you, Barnett? Let's get going. Okay, but I hate to see the boy break the old man's heart, and for nothing... Mr. Barnett! Augie! Hold it. Okay, kid? It's okay, just twisted. Well, now you win, Mr. Barnett. I'll go in with you. As far as the grand jury? I guess so. So let me rest this ankle a minute. Check the target area for clearance. Yes, sir. Forward observer. Dog battery to forward OP. Is target area cleared of all personnel? All clear, dog battery. We'll make the shack our target. Have the observer pick a reference point, we'll begin to zero in on it. How is it, kid? It's OK. I guess I can make it now. I'll give you a hand. What's wrong, Augie? Maybe you should stay here with that bad ankle. I could stay with him while you get help. No, it isn't bad, Augie. Oh, you got to be careful about these. You heard him say it was okay. Come on, you're the one who was burning to get out of here a minute ago. I cooled off. Don't be coy. We got a date with a grand jury. It's just been canceled. Now get over there. So Willie sent you up here to help me, huh? Willie thinks I'm in Detroit. He also thinks I'm going to let this crazy kid light a fuse under a million dollar policy racket and maybe send us all to the tank. Willie isn't going to like that. Willie will be taken care of. Got everything planned, haven't you? 
That's right. And we're going to sit here until it gets real dark. And then we're going down to look at the river from underneath. If you'd only quit like I said in my note. What's that? Hey, that's... Maybe it's the cops, Augie. Very funny. What is it, soldier boy? Nothing. Just maneuvers. <laughs> Anything? Very funny. That was even closer. You're right, Augie. And the next one should be even closer. Well, what are they doing? For a big man with a small artillery, you don't know very much. They're zeroing in. They pick a target, see? Then they straddle it. Zing, zing, boom, boom. Closer, closer. One here, one here. Then finally, right on it. Our shack could be the target. Who knows? We're getting out of here. Imitation shells, Augie. You get killed out there. Okay, we stay here. Maybe this ain't the target. On the other hand, maybe it is. We better take off. Uh-uh. We take that chance. Our forward OP says he can't see target because of smoke and dust, but we seem to be straddling well. Fire! It's like we're it. How does it feel to be on the wrong end of a muzzle, Augie? Shut up. The sound of those explosions, I said they're about 105s, right, Bill? Yes, sir. About three more rounds, and I have it zeroed in? Maybe two. You get the picture, Augie? Zing. Zero, shut up. You're not going to live long enough to get killed. There's one. Well, there must be somewhere to stop him. There is. What? Sure. There's a signal, right, Bill? Yes, sir. Well, what is it? You think we ought to tell him? What, are you crazy? You want to get killed? Hand over the piece, dude, and I'll tell you. What do you think? I'm crazy in the head? As a matter of fact, I think you're pretty crazy. Come on, hand it over. Not on your life. If I go, you go too, Barnett. The next one should do it, Augie. Come on, Barnett. What's the signal? Uh uh. Come on, Barnett, we don't have much time. Hand it over. I'll kill you first. Okay, go ahead. Barnett. All right, Augie, you win. Two salvos, three shots each, but hurry. It better work. Are you sure that's it? I haven't the faintest idea. Why, you dirty... Thanks, Augie. These rods only hold six shots, you know. If you know how to pray, you better pray somebody heard those shots. Hold your fire. What? Yes. Holy mackerel! There's someone in that target shack. Hold your fire. Sounds quiet. Okay, Augie, get going. If you'd like, we'll stop by a barber shop and get your first year haircut like Bill's. Where well, you're going, you'll need it. but the sovereign state of New York. If you tune in on this same channel next week at the same time, you'll see another exciting case reenacted from my private files. Many of the situations have been fictionalized, but what you will witness will be portrayed substantially as it happened and acted on the spot where it happened. You will witness what occurred in each case when I was assigned to follow that man.